This video is a response to math and inconvenient truth. Actually, it's a response to the response of the original uh, math and inconvenient truth video. Anyway, um, I just wanted to share some of my math theories and and uh, kind of share with you the struggles that I had as a kid and how I agree with you that math has to be more than just memorizing algorithms because especially when you get into algebra you get into a linear uh, equation slope things like that where you know there's just too many algorithms to remember but let's um, start with elementary school math and uh, when I was a kid and my daughter has experienced this also in school it seems like the goal is to see how fast you can do these from. Okay, ten seconds. Do it. Memorize them. Get them. Go. 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 You got them. Okay. All right. So that seems to be a big focal point in learning math in, in grade school. It seems like these are great, but the only problem is sometimes they don't exactly explain to you why. 4 times 3 is 12, or whatever, you know, why is that useful? Where am I going to use that in life? Um, let me give you an illustration, um, not the best drawing in the world, but it'll, it'll do. But anyway, this is a way I think that math should be taught in, in coming to an understanding of how math can be used as a tool to solve real-world problems, which we encounter every single day. And well, not this particular one. Um, probably in uh, Moses' time, they probably experienced this more than we do now. Um, okay, here it is. Anyway, showing kids like we've got six sheep out in this field, and we got two people. And they both want equally amounts. Did I say that right? Equal. Am I'm sorry. Equal amounts of sheep. So as you can see, it's there's six sheep, two people. So if you div use division, the tool of division, they will each get three sheep. So it's real easy to see when you teach math like this, you know, how it can be used as a tool to solve these pro kinds of problems. And let's look at multiplication. Oh, one more thing I want to add on this. Remainders, you're like, okay, what is the remainder? Okay, why do I have a remainder? Okay, so if you added a sheep to this field, well, you know, there's no longer equal amounts of sheep. One person will get one more than the other. So, you know, you really see how things work together. And that math it's not just a bunch of numbers on a sheet they have to memorize real fast. Anyway, here is the next one. 2 times 3. Well, you could illustrate it like there's two groups of marbles and each group has three. Now you can count each marble or you can use multiplication as a tool to find out the answer real fast. Very cool. Okay, the next one I think would, would be a great uh, tool to um, teach kids um, about variables using just like a QBasic programming language or, or just some, actually they have a kids programming language now, but if you look at the age, that is a variable and whatever you set that to will determine what the response is. Ignore this little formula thing on the, on the bottom, the X is whatever, but um, you can see that you know, if the age was 15, you know, the response could say you're not an adult. If the age is 21, okay, you're an adult. If the age is 20, then, you know, you're, I don't know what you are, teenager, adult, who knows. Um, but that would be another way to teach kids at an early age about variables and getting them ready for algebra. Now, you had mentioning the see, I cannot talk today. This is, I'm improv it, and I'm not going to spend the time to edit it, so bear with me. Please do not send rude comments, people out there on YouTube, because I will not respond. Okay, anyway, 
Here we go. Now, you would mentioned reasoning through problems as opposed to using algorithms, and one of the algorithms that drove me nuts was the concept of borrowing. Like, okay, and this number, 201 minus 130. Okay. And I'm totally killing my presentation. I wish I had PowerPoint, or I could get it, but I just don't have the time to go through and edit all this stuff. Um, if you look at this, it's confusing to know, okay, if I use that algorithm where I gotta borrow and all that stuff, which number do I borrow from? Is it the zero or the one? I don't know. And I'm probably gonna get it wrong and then I'll get that big red check mark on my assignment and then, you know, I don't know. Okay, anyway, I tried to reason through this problem instead, which I've never done before. But I said, okay, you know, in the real world, uh, you always come across situations where you want to know how much money you have and whatever. Okay, so what I did was, okay, I know two, $200 minus $100 would be $100. And then I looked, okay, now that leaves me with 30 and $1, okay. So if I subtract 30 from $1, I know that I've got $29. So if I subtract both of those, what do I get? <gasps> 71. Wow. And I didn't have to use that tricky little uh, algorithm that drove me crazy in the fifth grade, and I spent countless hours trying to figure out how to do that. And you're right. I reasoned through it and was able to solve it headache-free. Anyway, that's my uh, take on math. Um, thanks a lot. Great videos. Um, if you can, create some videos. Show us some of your... Uh, uh, ways for solving different things and I, I'd like to hear more on uh, you know hey even if you could like create a math tutorial that would be uh, great okay this one's gonna be hard to see because when you compress video um, everything becomes a big blur so anyway what you want to do is write down 521 minus 275 I want to show you another problem um, we can reason through with um, without having to do all the algorithm stuff with borrowing and blah blah blah. Okay, so we know that 500 minus 200 is 300, but there's some left over. So we can get rid of the 200, well let's just say dollars, we'll get rid of the $200 out of that. So, okay, now we're left with 2175. So to make things easy, let's subtract 75 from 21, we get 54. And now there's that issue with that that extra hundred dollars. So to figure out what that would be, if we did a hundred minus fifty-four, it would be kind of confusing because then we'd have to use that algorithm again for borrowing. Blah blah blah. We don't want to do that. So let's subtract ninety-nine. And just remember, there's a dollar left over. So subtract ninety-nine from fifty-four. You get forty-five, and then throw that dollar in there. You get forty-six. Now two hundred plus 46 is 246, which is the answer.